So last fall, I wanted to start a garden, and it was really important to me that I did it as organically and sustainably as possible. So I'm gonna show you how you can do it too. Hey y'all, hey, it's Ashley Renee, and welcome back to my little corner of the world where I show you sustainable and plant-based ways to have a healthier body, a smarter home, and a greener planet. So I began my sustainable living journey in 2015, and y'all, I've come a long way since. So two years ago, my husband and I, we built this solar powered home and we're constantly finding new ways to make it as green as possible. And that includes our garden space. So in this video, I'm gonna share 10 ways for you to create an eco garden. What does an eco garden even mean? <laughs> So to me, it means growing a garden that's filled with a variety of flowers, veggies, fruits, spices, and herbs that both you and the environment can be proud of. So one that's organic, sustainable, and eco-friendly. So let's begin, shall we? One, use native plants. So exotic plants are intriguing and all, but native plants are where it's at. So native plants naturally adapt to their local environment, making them hardier and less maintenance than imported exotic plants. That also means more money in your pocket because their ability to withstand weather changes will prevent you from having to replace them. So for example, last fall, I bought winter plants like pansies, dusty millers, and winter cabbage that was grown locally and native to my state. So these plants were so sturdy that even the pansies that were supposed to die in the spring, they lasted until July. They are also essential to keeping the ecological system from going out of whack. So without native plants and the insects that co-evolve with them, local birds and many other species, they struggle to survive. Two, attract native pollinators. So my 10 year old neighbor asked me why I don't cringe when I see bugs. And aside from my genuinely insane love for animals, insects included, yes, their existence is also vital to humans. So more than one third of the world's food supply is produced by crops pollinated by insects, but our insect population is disappearing. The good news is we can help by attracting pollinators with our gardens. Those native plants that I mentioned will help with that, of course. But also, pollinator-friendly plants in particular will help bring in pollinators like hummingbirds and bees and don't worry, most bees don't even sting. Use flowers on the yellow and the blue spectrum to attract multiple species of bees, some of whom sleep in the closed flowers at night. Three, avoid chemical pesticides. Biological pest control and sustainable gardening go hand in hand. You can nix chemical pesticides and instead rely on natural predators and natural insect repellents too. So natural predators, for example, by relying on the natural enemies of pests, the predator and prey cycle remains unbroken, allowing nature to take its course without human intervention. So predators like birds, ladybugs, the praying mantis and spiders, yes, spiders, will naturally do what predators do and rid your garden of pests so that you don't have to. Then there's the natural garden bug repellent. You can make your own by combining neem oil, Castile soap, and some warm water into a spray bottle. But I prefer the natural predator method. Okay, next, shop organic. When you first start your garden, you probably won't have a compost pile to nourish it with. So when shopping for soil and plant food, look for products labeled as organic. These will help your fruits, your vegetables, your flowers, and your lawn grow in a more organic way, free from chemical pesticides and fertilizers. Now, if you plan to plant seeds, focus on searching for non-GMO seed packets. Conventional seed production is usually lengthy and chemically intensive and invites more pests and disease due to the longer production times. So organic seed crops, however, are carefully managed in protected environments 
that minimize disease pressure, greatly reducing the need for harmful chemicals. Five, start composting. Compost is the coveted black gold your garden will thank you for. Organic nutrition you can add to your soil to help your plants grow. You make it by combining nitrin, like non-meat food scraps and garden trimmings, with carbon, like fallen leaves and you know stuff like that. It's a great way to reduce food waste while keeping your garden happy. At the same time, it'll take weeks for the compost to finish, so the earlier you start, the better. Six, collect rainwater. Rainwater is free and natural, so why let it go to waste? Conserving rainwater lessens your impact on the earth and it lowers your water bill simultaneously. So get a rain barrel to collect rainwater and use it to water your garden. This will especially come in handy during the winter time and in drought heavy areas. All right, seven, regrow your food from food scraps. If you already buy organic food from the grocery store, why not try saving some of those food scraps and regrowing it in your garden? So I've experimented with scallions, potatoes, tomatillos, garlic, and more. You have a ton of options. Regrowing food from food scraps you have in your fridge, it's a sustainable skill that anybody can experiment with, and you'll be helping cut back on unnecessary food waste that'll probably just end up in a landfill. Not probably, it will. <laughs> Eight, add mulch. Mulch helps retain moisture around plants. It reduces evaporation, suppresses weeds, and keeps the soil cool. It also makes your garden look super polished. But do not make the same mistake I made though. Uh, I bought <laughs> red mulch because I thought it would be a dope way to add some color to my yard. But the best mulch you can buy is natural mulch and not mulch that's been artificially dyed. Nine, ditch the gas-powered lawn equipment, please. According to the EPA, gas-powered lawn and garden equipment, GLGE, <laughs> is known to emit high levels of toxic and carcinogenic pollutants. Switching to battery-powered mowers, trimmers, and blowers means cleaner air and more money savings. We have a robot lawnmower that we've had for about a year now, and it cuts the grass on its own, but if you want something more traditional, I suggest opting for Ego products. Operating one of these instead of a gas-powered lawnmower will help reduce pollution. And 10, install solar lights. Now, for one of the finishing touches of your garden, Solar lights, they are a great way for you to reduce your carbon footprint for your garden because they use converted energy from the sun. And these have LED light bulbs which are designed to consume less energy and last longer. Reduce your dependency on electricity by utilizing the incredible power of the sun. It's free and plentiful, so take advantage of it by lighting a garden path with solar lights. This is one of those products that will leave you feeling satisfied in the end. Gardening is kind of addictive. Like for me, I guess it kind of takes me back to my childhood. My mom and my dad had green thumbs and I honestly never thought that I would have inherited it. So if gardening scares you, don't let it. If I can do it, trust me, you most certainly can as well. My parents had a gigantic garden and it didn't happen overnight. That's the fun thing about gardening. It's a project that will bring a lot of beauty and joy to your life and something you can continue building for years. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe for more vegan and sustainable lifestyle videos headed your way. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay green y'all. Pollinator friendly, you know, fruit spices.